Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to wherever you're joining us from today. Um, we are, sorry, I was, I'm being I'm confused by the impact of that of being in reverse, but yeah, hopefully it's the right way around for you. Um, thank you for joining us today at Open House, coming to you live today from uh, Impact Hub Bradford, <laughs> in the middle of beautiful Bradford City. If you haven't um, come to check out the workspace, uh, make sure you do so in the near future. We yeah. open today, everything is open and abiding to um, health and safety guidelines yeah we'll have you come down and check out the space um, open house is a monthly get together that we have once a month um, with our followers and people within the impact of Bradford network more than welcome to join us in person at the next one or if you're joining us as you are right now via YouTube um, today we are going to be talking about purpose adventures um, we were just discussing before we all start initially a, a project or a business with some degree of purpose in mind. Yeah. But as we journey through the stages, setting up and, and getting things cracking with that business or project, quite often it's easy to get distracted and move away from that purpose. So um, the purpose of today's discussion is to get a bit more gold <laughs> and a bit more wisdom from somebody yeah. who knows more about that and can help us with that journey and how we navigate things going forward. Yeah. So, sorry, we didn't introduce ourselves. We didn't. No, my name is Israel. This is my wife and co-host Yvonne. 
Um, and Yvonne, do you want to introduce our guest? Yeah, absolutely. So before we start, I just wanted to let you guys know, so if you're joining us for the first time, this is actually our fourth open house. And all the other ones have been recorded, just the same as this. So you can go back and watch them. We've had some amazing conversations, really insightful guests. Um, and you've got absolutely nothing to lose in re-watching any, any of the ones that we've had in the past. They're all absolutely full of wisdom, great for you starting a business, or maybe you're still like umming and ahhing about what you're going to do with your business. It is great just to watch it, get that knowledge, put that wisdom away for maybe later on when you are ready. So I'll encourage you guys to go back. And I think after this, we'll send uh, um, an email or a newsletter of something, some sort, and we'll actually put the links for all the, um, all the past ones so that it's easily accessible for you guys, sure. but we'd really encourage you to go back and watch them because they are absolutely fantastic. So today's guest speaker is Fiona Raz Jones. I really like your name. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it's just got this ring to it. I love it. Um, and she's the founder of Make Impact. So Fiona, I'm, I never try to do the introduction for anyone because I just won't do it justice. So would you please introduce yourself, your business and what you do? I will. So uh, my name is Fiona Ras Jones, as uh, Yvonne said. Thank you very much for having me here. It's great to be here. And I love this space yeah. and just everything that Impact Hub Bradford's about as well. Yeah. So um, awesome. thank you very much for having me. Um, so yeah, I run uh, Make Impact, which is an agency empowering companies to make their business a force for good. Um, and I kind of came to this work really through starting off in the charity sector. Mm moved on to um, public sector and, and sort of working for the council and then um, and then yeah moved into working with purpose adventures and social enterprise so I've been on quite a journey myself through this process uh, before actually setting up the company which um, yeah is based in um, Hepton Bridge just up the road from me. Nice. Brilliant um, and I noticed that you use the term a force for good and I love that can you tell me a little bit more about that? A force for good. Yeah. I mean, I think that there's been a lot of um, debates over the years around yeah. like what actually the purpose of business is, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> overall. And, you know, if you look at sort of like Milton Friedman's classic definition, you know, it's to make money for shareholders mm. as the purpose of business. But that was a, you know, that's not been sort of historically what the purpose of business is. It's, there's been very much more of a sense of, of sort of social responsibility and, and being part and embedded within our community. And I think a lot of people are, are kind of turning on to the idea of, of making business, you know, a force for good yeah. to, to sort of like give back and go beyond and find, you know, not only kind of essential social purpose, but also personal within yeah. that. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the sort of like key expressions in this space now is that, you know, people want to, you know, work for, buy from and invest in yeah. companies that they believe in. Absolutely. You know, that that's just huge. And so I think we're going to see a massive change in, um, well, we already are seeing a massive change yeah. in kind of perceptions of like what business is here for. Yeah. yeah. And I think like as set for me anyway, as a small business owner, it's sometimes it's a bit overwhelming when you even start to be a purpose led venture or, or a force for good. Yeah. Because like you see the big companies doing massive things mm -hmm. and you don't even know where to begin as a small yeah. in one person run <laughs> business. How I mean, can we talk a bit more about how to actually go on that journey to make your business. Yeah, so I think that, um, so first of all, I think there's lots of different ways to kind of approach purpose yeah. sort of overall um, within a company. So I think sort of if we start there, yeah, talking yeah. about that. Absolutely. So um, purpose in the way that we're talking about it here is a sort of instant, the sense of a social environmental purpose mm -hmm. overall. And, um, and the area of work that I focus on is um, business for good. So that kind of goes a bit beyond that, mm -hmm. just that main kind of mission and purpose, really. So it's for a company that wants to make a positive impact on society okay. in a way that's led by a social environmental purpose is integrated throughout the business. So it's also taking consideration of your impact for your in your governance, mm -hmm. for your staff, mm -hmm. for the community, the environment and your customers right. as well as well as kind of aligning that with a business strategy. So looking at opportunities to, to sort of build in opportunities for growth and um, and ways to address sort of business challenges. So um, so that's the kind of area that I focus on, but I think you know, specifically in terms of, you know, what you're talking about kind of like where to start, mm -hmm. if you want to start doing good, I think that there's, you know, there's different ways and approaches to that. And, and I think first of all, it's kind of figuring out, um, you know, 
Are you talking from the perspective of a startup or someone who's established? Because I think there's a couple of different ways yeah. to approach it. Well, let's it. start with a startup and okay. then we'll go into an established. Yeah. Because I'm sure we've got people in both areas mm -hmm. um, listening at the moment and future, like in the future as people re watch this, yeah. there'll be different stages of their mm -hmm. business. So yeah, let's start yeah. with a startup and then move to established. Okay. So I think, first of all, um, as a startup, it, it's really good to kind of consider and, and chat to other people for their, their views and to kind of figure out two things. Um, one, like what's your unique ability? Mm -hmm. And two, what's your strongest held opinion? Mm -hmm. as, as a kind of core, because essentially you've got to be really clear. If you're going to be driving a business of any kind, mm -hmm. I think that you've got to be really clear on um, it being a good fit for you. And I think sometimes I see a mistake with people sort of starting a purpose-led business of focus, you know, of kind of like starting with the problem that they want to solve. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if that's not aligned with their strengths or, or their opinions and, yeah. and who they are, then, you know, that, that kind of can sometimes run away with them yeah. and you can get lost. And so I think like, first of all, it's really important to kind of like ground yourself in terms of, you know, what what's your unique ability? and what's your strongest held opinion yeah. and start digging into that really kind of you know start to kind of like uncover that more like why are those my like you know strong opinions you know mm. what are what is my unique ability and how can i give that to the world you know in, in some way shape or form within a business sense um and then kind of moving on a bit more to kind of like look at you know you know, i think once you're kind of secure in that it's kind of like finding that like why what is going to drive you um in something that's aligned with that so you know, there's lots of different ways to find that. It might be something that's very obvious in terms of like a social or environmental issue that is personally important to you or something that um, you've seen that, um, yeah, that affects you personally or something that you've seen and you just feel a real connection with. But it's not always that obvious for people as yeah. well. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, having a look at like what are some of the challenges in our society? And I think there's a few places to look for that. And I think, you know, first and foremost, kind of within your local community, there is loads of data that's held within councils and charities and kind of community and voluntary sector groups that kind of talk about what are the local problems being faced? You know, what are those core challenges? Um, at a sort of more international level, you've got like the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which sort yeah. of like outline key areas um, that need to be developed. But I think also, you know, you can kind of go beyond that as a business. What about, a, you know, looking at the problem of a particular industry that needs to be reinvented? Yeah. You know, like a, a kind of pollute, you know, particular sort of polluting industry or an unethical industry. How could you sort of, maybe a purpose is about actually transforming that rather than focusing on a key sort of social environmental issue. So I think, you know, finding that is, you know, yeah. and, and what that is, is, is really important sort of as that first step. Yeah. And, um, and I, so there's two different types of of ways to kind of look at a business, um, a purpose-led venture. One is um, what's called the broken market model. Okay. Um, and the other is sort of like an integrated purpose model. So um, the broken market is where if you have a, a cause that, um, that uh, the beneficiaries of that cause, so, so say like um, you want to provide services to support homeless people, yeah. they're not necessarily going to be in a position to pay for that service yeah. that you're going to provide. Yeah. So you need to find another route to yeah. provide that income, yeah. you know, be it sort of doing a different type of business that you think, well, I know that I can make money in this mm -hmm. to raise money so that I can sort of support that cause. And so it's quite separate or you find sort of a different market through say like sponsors or um, thinking about, um, yes, yeah, sponsors or, or kind of, selling services to councils yeah. or the government, you know, whatever route that might be. Um, and that could be quite disconnected. So yeah. for example, there's a, you know, a really interesting marketing agency that I know of, and their main purpose is actually around um, minimizing uh, uh, diabetes, you know, finding ways to sort of like challenge and, and tackle diabetes, but their models of their delivery within their business are completely unrelated. Yeah. Um, so that's a kind of broken market model. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the integrated model, yeah. which um, is my personal preference. But, yeah, um, okay. but it, you know, I think everyone's got to find their own way. But it's you know, it's thinking about um, how you bring your purpose together, looking at the elements of something you love, yeah. something that you're great at, yeah. something that you're paid for, great. and something the world needs. Mm, so if you think of those, yeah. you might have seen these kind of diagrams online around yeah. sort of like finding your purpose, so it's kind of like interlocking yeah. circles and you sort of find that sweet spot in the middle. Yeah. 
Um, and so if you're a startup, you know, I think it's really important to get really clear on, yeah, your unique ability, your opinion, and then try and map out those areas around your purpose okay. and and work to sort of like find a, a central point where those, those interlap, uh, yeah. overlap. Um, so yeah, does that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, it does, that's really good. So I think we'll we'll break it down at the end. I'll, we'll rewatch really and we'll break down like what you actually, the steps to, yeah, to let's take. Just say them again now while we... Okay, babe, why don't you... <laughs> Sorry, I don't... I don't... <laughs> I'm I'm like, no one, babe, okay. like, tell us again. Yeah, tell <laughs> Summarise it in a few words so we can... So I think, you know, if you want to sort of find your, you yeah. know, your overall purpose, I think, you know, the first step is, step one would be to identify what your unique ability yeah. and your strongest right. held opinion right. is. Okay. Yeah. Identify what your unique yeah. ability and your strongest held opinion is. Yeah. 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 And then, I th you know, and dig into that to, yeah. to sort of find, you know, explore sort of what some of the social issues are, yeah. social environmental issues are, where that yeah. overlaps yeah. and where you could serve. And I think, you know, it's really important as well, you know, Sometimes you see the mistake of people rushing in to, to kind of create a business model mm -hmm. around a solution that isn't tested or proven mm -hmm. and you haven't um, necessarily fully understood the problem. Yeah. And actually, you know, like, um, well, it's quite controversial, but like, you know, one of the examples of that, you know, which I think is quite interesting is, is Tom's Shoes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody knows that model one for one, you know, it's incredible. It's, yeah. you know, created, in, you know, massive impact in terms of, you know, this guy, you know, went to South America, saw kids without shoes, yeah. was like, right, I'm going to do something about it, created a business model, yeah. the one for one. It's great. But at the same time, I think, you know, and what they've looked at now and why they've stopped doing that model is because they sort of scratched below the surface and, and kind of like, okay, well, in us giving those shoes to those kids, maybe we're putting local shoe sellers out of business. Oh, Maybe we're undermining um, their relationship with their parents. Yeah. Maybe some of those shoes then get taken away from those kids and get sold to others. Yeah. And are we actually, you know, and, and is it just about shoes? Actually, yeah. it's something much deeper than that. Yeah. That's, you know, that's a symptom yeah. that, that has kind of like come out of that. Yeah. So I think, you know, within that piece as well, it, it's really important to understand you know what actually is the problem to make yeah. sure that what you do design and how you do address the purpose that you're you're trying to address is is going to be sort of like well thought thought yeah. through within that so you're not unintentionally creating negative impact yeah um which i think we all sometimes do oh we, yeah we just don't look because i've never thought about that it's mm. like are we is it are we just scratching the surface of the problem we've actually Really, yeah, we're creating more problems, or we actually gone deep enough to see what is actually the root cause. Yeah, yeah. And are we fixing that root cause? Yeah, so that's really good. So, a really good way to, to sort of think about um, how you can get around that really yeah. is you know, once you're looking at an, a social issue, is um, to do the five whys. I don't know if yeah. you're familiar with the five whys, no. but it's literally to sort of to say, okay, why is this happening? So, you sort of start with a problem, why is this happening, and then take it to the next level, and why is that happening? And, and ask that question so you're wow. going deeper and deeper yeah. five times. Yeah. Now, you don't have to go and go, right, we have to look at solving the root, you know, the base of this. Yeah. You know, overall, you can figure out where you want to, in, you know, where you want to make your intervention, yeah. where, you, where you want yeah. to go in. Yeah. But then you're doing it from a position of knowledge yeah. and power, you know, like within that, because you're understanding the system, the wider causes. Yeah. And so doing a bit of research, taking the time to do a bit of research around, you know, that issue, what works, what doesn't work, you know, like maybe there's an incredible purpose adventures in, you know, in Italy or yeah. something that's doing something very similar or yeah. in a slightly different context. And, and maybe they found some, some solutions that you could like bring forward yourself okay. to, to yeah. kind of create that impact. So I think, um, I think, yeah, doing that research and really understanding it is, yeah. is very important. Yeah. Okay. I was going to ask what if you, because some, there's a lot of purpose adventures maybe that will crowd one certain um, aspect of life or society that has a need um what if you really feel strongly about something that's kind of already crowded mm. how do you do you yeah. like verge off somewhere else or do you i'd say is that problem solved in society mm. okay. and the answer invariably is going to be no okay mm. and um, i think this is where you do see yeah a lot of people crowding into a particular place but i think it's understanding yeah. you know what's working what's not working you know and seeing where are the gaps and thinking about how can i actually collaborate with some of those other organizations kind of like each take you know a different area and and maybe there's ways to kind of overlap feed each other work you know work in collaboration okay. um on that point but so but yeah i think that 
but that's it. But there's so many kind of nuances to these challenges and these problems. And I think doing that five whys as well, you start to sort of like really understand and uncover, um, yeah, all of the, the sort of complexities and intricacies of it. And so you can start figuring out like, you know, where not only kind of like, where is this most needed? Where am I passionate about it? Because it's got to be driven by you as well. It might be yeah. most needed, but if it's not, you know, this is going to take so much of your time and energy. So it's sort of thinking about that. But it's also making sure that you've got the right market for it. Mm. You know, and I think that that's, that's key to, to, to sort of like business overall. You know, you've, and I quite often say, you know, and again, some people might find this controversial. But <laughs> I, I love it. Keep going. <laughs> um, but, you know, that there's no purpose without profit. Yeah. You know, and... And uh, there isn't, but you know, in a lot of ways, yes, you can do voluntary work mm -hmm. and you can kind of bring that together, but you still need that often like the infrastructure to bring that together, that yeah. people need to get paid. Yeah. So to Absolutely. create that, you need spaces, you need resources yeah. to, to kind of deliver any sort of level of profit. And I think that that's um, sometimes a huge mis misconception around this kind of work as well, yeah. is that, that people feel shy or of making money or like they shouldn't yeah. be making money through this yeah. and i flip that on its head i say you've got responsibility to make as much money as you can mm -hmm. you know not as you can as you want to yeah. so that you can increase your impact yeah. and make Absolutely. more of a difference in yeah. the world and and so sort of getting that business model right yeah. is central to it yeah Absolutely. Oh, that's brilliant. I, I'm glad you touched on the profit thing part because I do think a lot of people are like, yeah, we are, well, if I'm going to do good, then how can I actually run a successful business? Like it's like one or the other, yeah. which doesn't have, I mean, at the end of the day, you still have to pay your bills. You still have to pay your, your rent for being on this earth. Yeah. So um, that's a really, I think that's really good to to yeah. know that that is just as important. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I do think a lot of people would need to hear that and might even switch that help them to make that switch so actually can I do better in my business yeah because I'm it's not it's not going to decrease or minimize like that aspect of it yeah so and great. I think sometimes it's sort of with that yeah I personally want to see purpose-led ventures like growing yeah. outperforming their sector and changing their industries yeah you know pushing those boundaries and, and, yeah. and making other players sort of like change and I think that's where real yeah, I think that's where real change is going to happen, yeah. um, sort of overall. But at the same time, there's no point in doing growth for growth's sake. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, as an individual, particularly as a startup, but it's kind of like, I think it's important as well to question, like, what do you actually want to achieve? Yeah. You know, with the business, where do you want to focus? And 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 think about the actual impact that you can make on that scale yeah. as well. So, yeah. you know, like, thinking about, you know, I want to end world hunger, mm -hmm. but I just want it to be me and one other person. <laughs> It's going, you know, it's, yeah. it's not necessarily going to be such a great match, but, yeah. you know, maybe just kind of thinking about, like, how can, you know, what scale of impact can you realistically create yeah. in terms of what you want to do? Mm -hmm. And um, and also thinking about, um, yeah, you know, so it might be we restrict that geographically or, in, you know, so actually just in this area of Bradford, I'm going to, like, you know, focus on thinking about how I can help um yeah, children eat better, yeah. you know, or you know, or whatever that is, and, and it's kind of looking for that like overall niche. But it also has to have that really practical business model attached. Otherwise, yeah. it's, it's not going anywhere. And I think, you know, quite often you do see small purpose adventures sort of stifling themselves, and and their potential to achieve more impact because they're almost over delivering impact early on. Yeah. Great. Right. So we've talked about how startups do it. Now I'd love to do, um, go into how like established businesses. Obviously, once you you built your business, you're you may make a huge profits. You've obviously somewhere you're growing that's allowed you to come what uh, just move out of the SME um, mm -hmm. to a large an actual large business. Yeah. But how at that point when you've already built all your foundations, do you now start adding that? Um, being that force for good when yeah. you already you already established yourself, maybe mm -hmm. like the world doesn't actually see you as a company that's let's say Amazon for <laughs> yeah. as an example. No one's gonna it'll take a lot for the, you to convince the world that you're actually a good company. Mm -hmm. So how would how does a business actually change that perspective and go about being a force for good when they've really established themselves for years and the world already yeah. has a particular view, their consumers already have a particular view of who they are. Yeah. Well I think the first step 
really is is to make sure that it's driven by the right reasons mm -hmm. you know i think that um i think we'll probably get into talking about greenwashing later yeah um yeah, but i think yeah that the right reasons has to be at the heart of it otherwise it's just going to fall on its face and everyone's yeah. going to see it through yeah. its staff and it, everyone's going to sort of be disappointed so yeah. it's got to be driven by the right reasons. but i think you know first of all you know i think it's like getting your house in order you know as a first step really and um and that's in terms of like looking at how do you treat your staff you know how are they on living wage you know do they get like fair benefits you know are you supportive of them do they feel supported do they enjoy their jobs yeah. you know thinking about um you know what's your supply chain look like you know is that fair as well you know yeah. are those practices fair is that ethical um it's you know does it reflect sort of diversity yeah um, thinking about the environmental impact um, and how you treat your customers mm -hmm. as well. So I think in the first instance, it would be, you know, just making sure you're doing the right thing through yeah. everything you do. And for yeah. some people, you know, that actually is enough of a purpose in, in terms of like making sure that, you know, across like governance, um, staff, community, environment yeah. and, um, and customers that, that you know you're doing the right thing yeah. and that you're making it the best it can be in that way and you know and maybe doing that in a way that challenges your industry yeah as well so i think that would be sort of the first step yeah. in a lot Start of cases mm -hmm. inside yeah. Yeah. yeah and um because you do see companies and you know yeah i'm i will just talk about greenwashing now <laughs> yeah, um, yeah go but you know you do see companies that are um you know saying oh we, we've given x you know this amount to charity aren't we good or mm -hmm. you know we've um, with uh, you know doing this environmental initiative, aren't they great? Aren't we great? But then you scratch the surface and you find out that they're, they're treating their staff like crap, yeah. or they've got really bad customer service, yeah. and, it, and it's just kind of like actually, what you know, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, because you know this this kind of work is really about authentically yeah. like living your values, yeah. and all of those practices are good for business, you know, as well. So it's it's kind of thinking about you know if you treat your staff well, make sure that they're engaged and you know, aligned with the business. They're going to be able to act more autonomously. You're going to be able to retain them for longer. Yeah. You know, you're going to be able to attract the right talent yeah. sort of overall. All of that is good for business. Mm -hmm. Same with customers. You treat customers well, you know, give them good guarantees, give them good customer service, yes. you know, treat them well. They're going to keep coming back. That's going to spread word of mouth. Yeah. You know, on the environmental front, I think, you know, they're, some people might argue that yes, sometimes it can end up like being more expensive, but I think like there's there's lots of ways that you can reduce costs through that. There's lots of ways that you can kind of like innovate to set yourself apart. There's yeah. grants available. There's you know there's lots of routes and ways that you can act more responsibly. And I think I think with that work, it's start somewhere. Mm. Yeah, I think all of it feels can feel really overwhelming. Yeah. So <laughs> so I think you know start somewhere, and I think. The most important thing is to kind of bring your staff on board yeah. with that and see like what matters to them most yeah. and start doing stuff. Yeah. Cool. I know you mentioned um, just now there's um, grants available and there's, there's things out there. Where, where What's a good resource to find all this information that is, at, is available to, to people? There's lots of different sources, but I think, um, you know, one of the good ones really is to go for your local economic partnership. Okay. To kind of link in that so so for us it's um the lead city region local enterprise partnership they've got a kind of like grants and funding page and they've got some really interesting stuff at the moment around yeah. sort of resource efficiency in the circular economy okay um but yeah there are lots of different sources on online which um i might i'll give you some links yeah afterwards fantastic. Yeah. um but yeah so so it's kind of thinking about that throughout but and then if a company decides that they you know want to create a purpose mm -hmm like for their organization to have all of that aligned and, you know i would say it's bring you know getting your stakeholders involved yeah yeah so you know in the first instance engaging kind of core cool people within the company mm -hmm. to, to sort of like understand what it would actually mean yeah make sure that there's that buy-in mm -hmm. that it's going to be for the right reasons that you can see both the benefits and the risks of yeah, that overall absolutely. Um, and then kind of, and then move out to kind of, you know, talking to your stakeholders. So that involves, you know, yeah, looking at um, speaking with your staff, speaking with your customers, yeah. maybe consulting your local community, maybe investors, you know, whatever area that is, yeah. um, to find, you know, to make sure that you're finding the right, the right sort of fit that everyone's heard, that it's going to yeah. resonate, um, and that it's, yeah, that it's, it's going to sort of work. 
really. Um, and from there, sort of, you know, build out, you know, a, their purpose to, to kind of like bring that together overall. Whether that is a sort of broken market model that they choose to kind of support a completely unrelated yeah. um, charity, or whether yeah. it's something that they integrate throughout their organisation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I would suggest. Mm -hmm. um, do you, yeah, I'm going to well, jump in there, but you can no, no, you go first. You go. You sure. go. I talk too much. Yeah. I don't want to talk too much. <laughs> but I know, like we've um, we probably sparked an interest in doing business with Gordon. Talked about the wires. We've talked about the there's three, right? I'm trying to be a good student today. The first, before, okay, so wise. business forgets that. Oh, the five wise. Yeah, yeah. It was the three. Um, oh, I'm doing lots of number banks. Yeah, yeah sorry. Right. Come on, help us out. We've, we've been inspired today by what we've talked about. Um, what are some of the obstacles that once you get started, or once you've established this is what I want to do, this is how I want to impact the world, what are some of the obstacles that organizations like, face? And yeah, if you can share with us how you've helped organizations yeah. overcome them, that would be great. Okay, I mean, there are quite a lot, so, um, <laughs> you know, I might, uh, yeah, I, if I'd kind of list out sort of a few of your yeah. skills sort of overall, and then you can maybe pick if you want to um, dig in. So I think that, you know, first of all, it's making sure that you're doing it for the right reasons yeah. um, overall, and, you know, yes, there are lots of ways that it can benefit your business, and I'm sure we can, like, get on to that, but at the same time, it's, yeah, it, it's not going to work if you're not doing it because you genuinely want to make your business better okay. yeah and you genuinely want to make a difference yeah overall. um so i think that that and that can be a challenge when you've got lots of people involved in the business yeah. as well so if you've got different sort of you know owners of the business or shareholders or um yeah different sort of senior members of staff i think getting that buy-in yeah is really crucial yeah um overall so i think that can be quite a barrier and even sometimes, you know, like when a company, you know, I've worked with a company um, who, you know, we thought that we had that buy-in mm. and we got a certain way through the process. And wow. then um, and then we realised that there wasn't that overall, you know, that, that overall buy-in. And it was just very difficult yeah. because there were then, it, you know, it kind of started in a yeah. process. Yeah. And there were like very differing opinions, uh, you know, and some people sort of because that process had been started, but then it had been let down. You know, some people it was actually kind of worse than if they hadn't done it mm. in a lot of ways because, yeah. um, yeah, because that kind of can cause friction, yeah. Um, absolutely. so that's sort of one barrier. Another barrier, I think, is um, not understanding how it can benefit your business, yeah, and making a business case for it. So maybe we, I could actually sort of talk about that, um, yeah. that part of it a bit more now. So, um, I think you know, for some people. It can go two ways. So I think either for some people, they don't see the business case of this. They're like, oh, yeah, that's nice to have. That's for when we've got lots of money. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll do that when we're done. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And then there's the other side of it that's that's kind of goes, oh, well, um, uh, we're going to do this because it's going to look really good for our PR. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to make us make loads of money. Yeah. yeah. You know, so like either way on, on the business case front, you know, there's there's kind of barriers yeah. um, and challenges around that. So, um, so first of all, just to kind of challenge that, I would say um, on the side where it's like we can wait, mm -hmm. I would say that there is a huge business case for it. Yeah. Overall, so we've got, um, you know, I'll, I'll list off some statistics. All right, uh, all right, for it. Um, <laughs> just kind of say it like. I'm not going to overload you with them, but there's three that I quite like. And, um, you know, one is that um, the Xeno Strength of Purpose surveys found out that um, a buyer is four times more likely to buy from a company that they believe has a strong sense of purpose, wow. yeah. which is huge that is. Um, as a lover. Um, the Edelman Brand Trust survey um, has demonstrated that 80% of people want brands to solve society's problems. Wow. Okay. And um, and a really interesting one, I feel like, you know, there, and there's loads of statistics out there that show the benefits, you know, not just in terms of attracting customers and sales, but also in terms of like retaining staff, attracting talent mm. um, uh, in areas like innovation, um, you know, looking at what investors want now. There's a lot of impact investors, a lot of like what's called ESG, which is um, environmental, social and governance based investors. Okay. Um, and, you know, they are crying out for good investments in this space, you know, overall. So there's a huge benefit there. Innovation, differentiating in your market and sort of standing out as well. So like, you know, there are lots of benefits 
throughout. Yeah. Um, yeah, and one that I find really interesting as a kind of comparator is um, Unilever. So um, Unilever has actually done loads around sort of like purpose-led business and sustainability, and um, you wouldn't necessarily know it from the outside because yeah. you know they, you think that okay they're a massive corporate yeah. um, organization, but um, they've got twenty-eight sustainable living brands that are all purpose-led, wow. um, and eight of those are B Corps. And of those, of all of their brands as a sort of comparator, those ones are growing 69% faster than the others. Wow. So it's really nice to have that like control measure, yeah. you know, overall rather than just to kind of like hear these big yeah. So there are these benefits. However, and you know, and I think this moves on to the, the kind of barriers that, that people, to people where they just feel it's going to make them money yeah. and doing it for the wrong <laughs> reasons. Yeah. And I think, you know, first of all, um, there are all of those benefits, but unless you build it in strategically and authentically, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's, that's really important sort of, a, you know, I think the lots of purpose adventures just kind of like start yeah. and they're like, well, I'm going to get loads of sales because I'm doing something yeah. good. And then it doesn't happen. Yeah. And, and I think that that's, you know, that's core to the whole piece really is that you have to have the right product market fit. Yeah. yeah. Overall, you know, and to find that, you need to speak to your customers. Yeah. You know, or if it's something, you know, if you, it's about like retaining and engaging staff and that's kind of like, you're, you know, attracting the right talent, speak to, you know, speak to your staff, speak to yeah. talent, the kind of talent that you want to attract, find out what matters to them, what's important to them, what's actually going to make a difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a matter of kind of like listening yeah. to that market rather than just kind of jiving in and going, well, if we have a purpose or if we do this good stuff, um, but then there's huge amount of power to leverage through that yeah. once you get it right. Yeah. But it has to be really, yeah, strategically and thoughtfully built into yeah. like how you're going to, yeah, build that model and, and develop it. And it has, you know, it has to be authentic. People are seeing through, you know, oh, yeah. people are seeing through <laughs> it. And I think more and more, you know, people are getting savvy um, and seeing what is real and what isn't real. Yeah. And um, you know, the pretending is just like easily shattered. Yeah. So um, I think that it, yeah, it has to come from the right place. It has to really be meaningful yeah. um, in order to develop that. So I think, I mean, yeah, I think that those are probably, you know, a couple of the main barriers yeah. sort of overall. There are other things on a personal level, you, you know, a, a lot of times, um, but I think that, I think the biggest, challenge really is how you balance purpose and profit mm. and there's no one answer there's yeah. no one way to do any of this yeah. you know it has to come from that individual person that individual company in terms of figuring out like where that right balance is yeah. but I think uh, you know and it, it's important not to stifle the potential of a company through over delivering impact mm -hmm. and over delivering on the purpose okay. but at the same time yeah not to sort of under deliver on that purpose as well and just focus on the profit yeah. and it's a learning process yeah you know and i think that's it no one is doing this perfectly yeah at all i don't care like patagonia no they're not doing it perfectly you know like you can name you know yeah. loads of purpose they come yeah, yeah. no one is yeah it's all learning yeah and um and i think that that's what i love about chatting to people who run purpose adventures is that yeah. they do see it as a learning process yeah. they don't have the answers and it's trying stuff seeing what works seeing what doesn't work trying the next thing yeah. in like you know little experiments all the yeah. time okay. i love that you mentioned a couple of businesses that you are doing it well but as you said no one's doing it perfectly would you talk to us about what are some of your favorites and why they're doing, making you think they're making such a great impact okay. it could be people you've worked with personally if you're yeah. allowed to share i don't know <laughs> or it could be um just any company that you you've watched closely and seen yeah, I think um, there's loads, yeah. sort of like overall. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna, your favourites. <laughs> well, I'm going to start with one of my clients. Fantastic, um, I love that. You know, I um, I really respect what they've done and how yeah. they've done it. So, um, North Star Coffee oh, Roasters. Star oh. Coffee. Um, so they're awesome. Yeah. You know, they um, basically like Holes, who set up the company. Um, with her husband Craig, another yeah. husband and wife, great husband and wife team. Yeah. Um, and you know, and it came out of their university sort of like dissertation and work around sort of fair trade. Yeah. And they um, spent three months in, I think it was 
East Africa. I can't remember now, but like going around coffee plantations and there's part of this kind of dissertation yeah. around, you know, what the difference fair trade has made. Yeah. And um, and out of that, they just, you know, it took a while to develop, but yeah. they, they were just like, there's a better way to do this. Yeah. And, um, you know, although fair trade has made a lot of difference, um, and been very positive, it's not across the board. Yeah. Um, and there are challenges around, um, like, uh, you know, some farmers have even, you know, being paid, you know, fair trade, mm -hmm. wages are still being paid below the cost of production. Oh, wow. So it's not profitable. Yeah. And there's a challenge with that, that sort of like business model overall. Plus for various reasons, um, it's, you know, there's a challenge around, um, an aging sort of farming producer mm -hmm. population as well. I think yeah. that, I think that she told me that you know the average age in the sixties. Oh my uh, goodness. And then there's issues as well with climate change, yeah. the effects of climate change on yeah, that. Sure. So there's a lots of challenges around the the actual viability of the business model to the point where she said, you know, she says that coffee industry might not actually exist. It might be, you know, if there's not the farmers, if there's not, you know, yeah, I know. No. <laughs> so I don't want to live on a planet without yeah. coffee. I was okay that water was going to run out. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but you know, unless something serious gets done, so you know, so she's completely like, you know, her and her husband have kind of developed this model where they pay um, farmers above fair trade, yeah. um, and they fair trade prices, and it's done on a case by case basis. So mm -hmm. like looking at the farmers in different countries, okay. and the producers yeah. in different countries, seeing what their cost of production is, and kind of developing it from there, so that they're yeah. being so that it helps make their business model more viable. Yeah. They also do like workshops and support with them to kind of develop their business and understand the kind of the quality of what they're producing. Yeah, um, and increase the sort of like overall quality of their production so they can charge more for it. Mm -hmm. Um, and and kind of support. They've, they've got a project where they're kind of supporting on some areas of like climate change mitigation and like encouraging those kinds of practices as well yeah. through that. So. Um, you know, it's an incredible model, and you know, for those of you who don't know, you know, there are there are coffee roasters um, based out of Leeds, yeah. and uh, they've been going for about eight years now, um, and they've got about twenty five staff. So they've got a roastery sort of like based in Leeds, so they kind of do their own roasting themselves, and they've got a coffee shop yeah. where they're demonstrating sort of again sort of like ethical, fairer ways to to kind of do coffee, yeah. really, and um, and uh, and to like run a coffee shop because again. There's issues with the business model yeah. around coffee shops as well. You know, there, there's challenges around that in hospitality. So yeah. they're looking at ways that they can like more broadly challenge it. Mm -hmm. They also, you know, have developed like really amazing programs for their staff in terms of like you know staff well-being and development. Mm -hmm. So they, they're looking at that area. They're supporting those kind of like local farming communities mm -hmm. more broadly, and they're really clear on their supply chain and, and kind of making sure that that's sort of sourced ethically. Yeah. They've just brought in the first home compostable coffee bags wow. um, I did, as I, well. I get their emails, so I didn't know oh, okay. that. Like, yeah, and uh, and they just treat their customers really well. Yeah. You know, they've got great, great customer, customer service. service. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, within that model, you know, their their main thing is selling coffee. Yeah. But it's the way that they sell coffee yeah. and it's what they do above and beyond that in yeah. terms of achieving that purpose to make try and make the coffee industry like more viable yeah. as a business model to help everyone throughout it. Yeah. Um and that really excites me. I love that. It's oh, it's so inspiring to hear yes. that. I love it just like that they've done what you, you said at the beginning, start at home. Like are you looking after your staff, are you looking after your customers, mm -hmm. are you looking after all your stakeholders? And that's just it's so nice to see that actually happening. Yeah. So close to home as well. Yeah. And we love, we love North Star. Like, I guess I know we're going for brunch tomorrow morning. Yes. <laughs> so, like, it's just so nice to see. And I think also, and as um, someone who's actually seen the business, it's it helps to see that it's actually viable for, because they, they they look and they, they have feel it's still a small business, like a family yeah. run business. I think you think, oh, we can't do that because we're too small. But you see that it is so possible. Yeah. So, oh, that's brilliant. And it's built into their, you know, sort of overall model that actually, you know, the more coffee they sell, yeah. so the more they grow, the yeah. more positive impact yeah. that they can be having Absolutely. with every cup sold, you yeah. know, because they're then able to kind of pay those producers fairer wages yeah. than what they would do normally, provide additional support, mm -hmm. do, you know, do those things more broadly. So, I think, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they are one of my clients, but I, I, yeah. I love what they're doing and yeah. how they're yeah. doing it. So good. And, and they make great coffee as they well. Do. They do. Yeah. yeah, everything. Do you have anything else, baby? Oh, before we let anybody who's watching now, if you have any questions, if you're on YouTube or anybody in the group, um, mm -hmm. we'll have a time at the end where we can ask you some questions. Yeah, I have got a question about uh, LEP. It was yeah. about Leeds. 
Uh, we're talking about they've got small pots and maybe grants to access. I'm from Bradford. If I'm from Bradford, will I be able to approach LAP about looking at small pots? Yeah, the um, it's for the greater Leeds, greater city Leeds. Oh, I've forgotten the exact name of it, <laughs> which Bradford's in yeah. as well. So, yeah, and every area across the UK has got like their own LEP or local economic partnership. So, they're a good place to start, and they also give like funding advice more generally um as well so it's not just the ones that they provide themselves they also sort of support with business funding and, and signposting around that yeah that's brilliant okay, that's a good question thank you um do you have anything else because i, I just want to touch on one more thing before okay now you go we, on, okay you go on. so I, I know we're going backwards but you yeah. when you yeah. were talking about um earlier when you were asking one of the questions so you you dropped two words in there that really that stuff with me, greenwashing and B Corp. I know they're two very and quite big yeah. <laughs> topics themselves, but I think everyone has heard the term greenwashing. Yeah. And you see all over Instagram and people like putting posts up about it. I'd love to like just unpack that a little bit more. Yeah. And then B Corp, because I, I I was saying to you before, I've seen that stacked on people on yeah. certain businesses, um, yeah. websites or their social media. And I always think, oh, that's the next, that's the next level business. But I have no idea yeah. what it is. <laughs> just like, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing something special. Don't know what they're doing, but they're doing something special. Yeah. So I'd love to like um, talk about those two things before yeah. we before we, we wrap up, yeah, yeah, yeah. two separate things. Right. I know, I all together. That's like, yeah. what should I start with? Greenwashing. greenwashing. Yeah. Okay, so I think that um, greenwashing. Yeah, we've kind of touched on it a little bit yeah. throughout, and I think it, you know, it's a massive issue. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of twofold though. So it's not just. I think there's the big challenge around sort of greenwashing and, and companies saying they're doing all these great things, mm -hmm. and either it not actually being true, or you know them like trying to distract from the other bad stuff that they're yeah. doing. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's one thing. But I also, you know, I think it'd be interesting to sort of touch on as well, like when people are called out for greenwashing unfairly mm -hmm. as well. And I think that holds a lot of people back from actually yeah. doing this work because they're scared of putting themselves out there yeah, yeah, absolutely. and being shot down for it. Yeah. Oftentimes completely unfairly. Yeah. So I think that there's there's those two sides of the coin again um, with this. So um, if I start off with, with sort of greenwashing in the you know in its first sort of sense really um i think that yeah but greenwashing and some people call purpose washing now as well and there's all okay. these different like new terms around okay. it all right. um but i think that you know that happens when you've got a certain area of the business that is you, you know doing something good and you're sh and you're shouting about that as like publicly yeah. as possible yeah. but then there's really negative impacts of the other rest of the business yeah. that aren't being accounted for okay. or you're overstating what it is that you're doing in relation to the positive social environmental impact that you have yeah. so that you know that's kind of happening in that case it's really interesting like advertising standards are bringing in new regulations around greenwashing and, mm -hmm. and what you can kind of state around that particularly in terms of environmental claims because mm -hmm. There's issues are you know what is sustainable what is environmentally yeah. friendly like these words are just kind of thrown around so yeah. that is going to be tightened up um and there has actually been a legal case I think a year or so ago um where, where someone's actually taken to court for um overstating like yeah. their green credentials as yeah. well so that is being clamped down on and, and people are right to be cynical yeah. because you know in a lot of times in a lot of these cases like it's really complicated yeah. you know it's, it's really complicated to understand yeah. like what doing good actually looks like yeah. um you know what yeah what doing the right thing is yeah. um and and how that yeah how that actually manifests itself and it's not always like super clear yeah. and a lot of companies are completely taking advantage of it yeah. but i think that that's where you know a lot of businesses get around that you know through reporting about their impact across the organization yeah. not just kind of like shouting about the one positive thing that they do yeah and using that as a hook to try and get more business but um i think as well it's um impact reports are quite interesting yeah. you know as well so these are kind of generally annual or biannual reports that companies produce mm -hmm. that demonstrate their impact overall uh, you know going into some level of detail you know ar around what are the impacts that we have, but also not just not just talking about the kind of the positive impact, but also like calling out saying, look, we know that we're doing this that's not right. Yeah. We know that we're doing this that's not bad, but we're getting to it and this is how we're getting to it. Or it's a problem that we're trying to solve. If you've got any 
you know, input into that, then that would be great, you know, and but yeah. we're, we're trying to solve, you know, do a work around it, particularly there's huge challenges around like packaging, yeah. for example, but behind the scenes, a lot of companies are actually doing some really good stuff to yeah. try to find solutions. They're making investments, making partnerships, you know, with industry innovation, with yeah. universities and, and such like to try to find sort of solutions to some of these challenges yeah. that, that isn't always seen. Um, and so I think that, um, yeah, greenwashing, is an issue. I think you know there's ways around it, and that's making sure that what you're doing is um, across the organisation, yeah. or you're being transparent about not only the good but also the bad, yeah. Yeah. Um, and some of those challenges as well. Yeah. Um, and in terms of being like called out, and I think that uh, it, it feels unfair sometimes that companies doing good yeah. like are under more scrutiny yeah. than uh, you know than yeah. those that aren't. So yeah. say for example, like one of my friends. Um, runs an ethical supermarket in Brighton. It's, it's like a, an amazing sort of like purpose-led venture. Yeah. They're not a health food shop, they're a supermarket. Yeah. They do a lot of local, you know, but there's like really amazing principles built by health, behind the whole thing. Yeah. They also sell meat as one of their areas. Yeah. And um, they had, you know, they're on a strip where they've also got little, there's co-op, you know, various yeah. other sort of supermarkets. But they were targeted by a, um, a vegan group uh, and he shut down the store for a day, saying that they shouldn't be selling meat. Wow. And it and it, it's an interesting one. Like sometimes, if you do try and stand out for doing something good, people hold you to higher level of expectations yeah. Yeah. overall. However, you don't see them shutting down the Yeah, it's just like, well, what about the bigger picture here? Yeah. You know, and you know, let's think about the broader impact yeah. over that. And um, however, you know, they handled it really well. The staff, yeah. like you know, spoke really kindly to those yeah. protesters tried to engage them into constructive conversations. Yeah. I think they got them drinks, you know, like as well, sort of like through that process, even though it was really hard for them because it shut down their business. Yeah. Um, uh, but it was, it, um, that enabled like a really interesting conversation to sort of like come out of it as well. Yeah. And I think that it is scary sometimes to kind of mm. put yourself out there yeah, with this stuff. Absolutely. But I think don't let it stop you yeah. because like why let the haters stop you from yeah. doing what you really want to do yeah. and being who you want to be yeah. and there's ways to you know there's ways to kind of counteract it and I think first of all is just saying no we're not perfect yeah. I mean, we never said we were perfect yeah. we're on a journey yeah. we're learning we're taking yeah. this step by step and if you kind of put it out there and approach it like that mm -hmm. then people are going to respect you and you know if people keep on like hating beyond that block them yeah. on social media yeah. because it's just not you know yeah. it's not worth engaging yeah absolutely um, that's fantastic so yeah that's been so, watching yeah the b, b corps Corp. <laughs> so um b corps and we've got a newly found b corp right in the room <laughs> Woo -hoo! Well done. Um, i'm so happy i don't know what i'm yeah. happy for though but i will know at the end of this <laughs> <laughs> um but uh but yeah so b corp is a certification yes yeah. the only certification that takes the account of a company's full sort of like social and environmental wow. impact. Okay, so um, that's those five areas that you, you yes. mentioned. Yep, yep. Yeah, so, um, and so it's a way to measure your impact, improve and get sort of independently certified mm. that you are um, doing those things, yeah. you're taking account of those things basically. Yeah. So um, there's something called the B Impact Assessment, mm -hmm. uh, which anyone can create a free account on. It's online, mm -hmm. and it does take into consideration those five areas: so mm -hmm. governance, uh, workers, community, environment, and customers. Mm -hmm. And it enables you to, yeah, measure the impact of your business oh, and come up yeah, with ideas on how yeah. to improve. Yeah, so it's so great for ideas. Yeah. And actually, um, you know, through doing that assessment, just as an example, mm -hmm. uh, an amazing company called Whole Grain Digital. Uh, they are a kind of web design agency yeah. who are doing some incredible things. Um, but one of the questions on the assessment was like, what's the environmental impact of your product or service? Mm -hmm. And they were web design, you know, it's like all online, it's not very obvious in terms of a product yeah. or service. And they just sort of thought, well, we could just maybe skip that one, you know, yeah. skip that one. Uh, but they were like, no, we want to find out actually what is the impact oh, wow. of yeah. our product. And they found out that, you know, through digging and doing the research, that actually, um, uh, oh gosh, if the internet was a country, yeah. it would be the fourth biggest polluter in the world. Wow. Oh wow. So where we're thinking, oh, it was all about paper free, yeah. actually the amount of carbon that we're creating through sort of like online oh, is massive. Hey. 
and they turned their whole in, their whole agency into a web sustainability agency. Oh, wow. So it's all about finding ways to reduce the like create low carbon websites. Okay. And they have got something called like a, a, they've created a website carbon calculator okay. um, where you can type in any web address and it tells you the carbon footprint wow. and how to reduce it. As well as you know creating amazing like low carbon websites for companies like. Um, eco there and you know national rail so they you know they're, they're providing those websites broadly but they're, they're doing it in a way that's low carbon they've created these online tools and resources the founder's has written a book about it and Whoa. talks regularly about like web sustainability and how to reduce that carbon yeah. footprint so it's another example of a yeah. sort of um purpose-led business that's a little bit of an aside but as a way to find like maybe where your purpose is doing that assessment mm, might be a good place to start. So, yeah. Um, but basically, you sort of you know you go in and you start it, and you need to get eighty points at least cool. in order to kind of press the button to certify. Yeah. And you don't have there's no kind of prerequisites. It's just rewarding. So it might be yeah. in some areas okay. you're doing better in than others, and it's yeah. you know no one's doing everything. Yeah. Of course. Um. Overall, and it's up to you to kind of decide and go mm -hmm. for that. Or, you know, decide where you want to prioritise and what you want to do. Yeah. Once you get over 80 points, you can press submit if you want right. to. Yeah. But if you want to become a B Corp, there is, um, yeah, you need to be verified as achieving that impact. Yeah. Uh, you need to pay an annual fee. Yeah. You also need to make a legal change to your governing documents mm -hmm. that show that you're acting not just in the interest of your shareholders, but with all of your stakeholders, yeah. which includes staff, community, yeah. you know, yeah. all of that as well. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, and create a, an annual impact report and recertify every three years. Wow. So where you see the kind of the B in a circle on mm. a lot of products and yeah, services, yeah, they've been through yeah. that process. Yeah. And, you know, so it, you can do it if you're like a one person organization or you know, you've got multinationals doing it as well. And um, some of the ones uh, that are certified that you might be most familiar with are, are um, uh, well, Danone, actually half of all Danone's brands are certified B Corps. The other half, they're gonna certify by 2025. Oh, wow. Um, ben and Jerry's, Patagonia, oh, uh, Vivo Barefoot, <laughs> yeah. Bay House Shoes. Oh, um, uh, gosh, so many, Ella's Kitchen. Yeah. I'm talking about like a lot of well-known brands, oh, but it's like yeah. B2B as well, you know, like across sectors, Hootsuite. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. yeah, I could, we transfer, there's lots that oh, are sort of certified yeah. so, yeah, um, I as B I always think of just um, so, um, companies that are selling a physical product. Yeah. I didn't realize yeah. there was so many, it was just across every Yeah, sector. absolutely yeah. everything. And I think, you know, as well, there's a way to recognize purpose through that as well. So it can be just for any company doing, making any kind of impact across their company. There's also, another level to it which is around impact business models yeah. so that's kind of like if you're designed if your product or service is designed to create a specific measurable impact for a social or environmental you know cause or staff or yeah. customers so and you get extra points for those oh yeah. wow. brilliant so yeah there's that accountability yeah 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 built in and it what you know I think what a lot of people find really nice is what it gives you an overall score and you're encouraged to increase that score but yeah. it's also a community and a movement so people who certify do then um support each other yeah. you know like help each other through okay. that process provide that mutual learning yeah, um brilliant. you know uh, and and try to kind of yeah do collaborative projects there's like yeah. working groups in different areas like circular economy yeah. dni all kinds of things like that, that you can get involved in once yeah. you become a big corporate yeah. as well Beautiful. So, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, I know we are yep, almost out of time, yeah. um, but thank you so much. We have obviously recorded this mm -hmm. and it will be available for you guys so you can re-watch it. We're going to send it out on the newsletter, aren't we? Yeah, we yes, we're getting a nod. Um, and we, we really hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much, Fiona. You are yeah. a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and um, if you have any questions, um, how can I get in contact with you? I oh, must always forget to do that. Yeah. Yes. So it's at makeimpact.co.uk yeah. or um, Fiona Rass Jones on LinkedIn. Perfect. And we'll make sure we put all that information in the newsletter as well. But thank you guys for joining us. Thank do you so have much. anything to say before we say uh, goodbye? Did we miss anything out that you wanted to talk No, about that's all great. Just thank you very much for having me. I love being works. here. I love Impact Club Bradford and everything you're doing. Thank you very much. No, it's been thank fantastic you. having you. It's a great so conversation. All yeah. good? All good. That's all good. Great. All right, guys. We'll we will see you next month. See you next month. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And make sure you come and check <laughs> out the space. Okay. All good.